America, baby. Woo! Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Today we're gonna run around the farm, we're gonna check on all the critters and make sure everybody's doing okay. And we're gonna be working on the John Deere 5065 tractor. I have a hydraulic line issue with the John Deere 5065. We're also gonna ride around the other side of the farm. I'll show you where I've dropped a bunch of trees. And basically we're thinning an area of forest that runs down along our creek side. So we wanna get out all the scraggly, no good trees and leave the trees that are desirable and that are good. A lot of poplar trees down in this area. We'll have a little bit of fun. We'll talk to you a little bit about what we're doing. We're clearing a little bit of land. We happen to have a stump grinder coming pretty soon to work on the farm and a lot of other tools. So a special thanks goes out to Chad and Shelby, North Country Off Grid. They just sent me their new shirt, their Wookiee shirt. Let's get around and we'll check on the critters. All right, woo! Guys, if you're here to see just how to replace quick connect disconnect I will post a time right up here that you can skip ahead just to see how to replace the quick connect connector on your tractor if not watch the whole vlog all right hey goaties hey goat hey goat friend that's PJ let me feed these goats so they'll shut up and I'll tell you about something bad that happened goaty goaties there you go guys. So you'd think these goats were starving to death by watching them, but I assure you they're not starving to death. Guys, we had a loss here on the farm. Right here where I'm feeding the goats was a gigantic bale of hay, just a roll of hay. Three of the little goats were right up beside the bale of hay and goats have a habit of climbing. So one of the bigger goats evidently hopped up on that bale of hay and it, poof, it fell over and smothered some goats it was so sad so i came up here and one of the mother goats was looking really distressed she was kind of looking around as if she was looking for her babies i didn't see her babies and i thought man what happened a coyote got up here you know what got to the goats and i saw that hay bale had fallen over and i went over and i just kind of butted it a little bit with my foot and i heard mm, and there was a baby goat still in there the little black goat the little baby black goat kind of in the middle of the mix right now was buried up under there but he managed to kick out enough hay so that he could breathe and it was a good thing that I checked on him you really got to check on your farm animals every single day guys because silly stuff like this happens it's just part of owning goats goats are really fragile they're really fragile creatures they like to get parasites they like to get stuff wrong with their gut worms they get their heads caught in fences I'd really seriously consider not having goats if I was just getting started homesteading because they do require a whole lot of maintenance and a whole lot of eyeballs. Now you might notice something different about the tractor shed right here. Nope, it doesn't have a backhoe in it anymore. We ended up selling the backhoe. I put the backhoe, it was a John Deere 310D. I put it up on Craigslist for 24 hours and it got gone. It got gone quick. So we sold the backhoe, it's gone bye bye. I think it was the right move to make. That money will suit us better working on fences than it would sitting under the shed. And the next thing we're gonna sell is the Bronco underneath the shed right here. Let's crank up the gator and head to the other side of the farm. Beautiful day here, guys. We don't get many days like this in January. I think it's 64 degrees. Awesome. The reason why we're going to the other side of the farm right now is to check on the dirt to see how muddy it is and i wanted to show you guys the trees that we've dropped down here on the creek line i'm going to give you a far off look real quick and then i'm going to take you down there so here is the section of trees that we're thinning out right here on our creek line and it basically goes all the way through down there all of what you see in grass over here on the other side was once grown up in saplings and trees and what you see that's cleared right here was grown up in full grown trees in other words all this used to be pasture and we're just taking it back we're not going to take all the trees on the creek line for the sake of the creek we want to take good care of our creek but we are going to thin out probably a third of these trees and we're going to get rid of stuff like this guy right here that's crooked and we're going to leave big tall wonderful pretty trees for our big 
pretty farm. Another thing that's going on here on the farm is it's coyote breeding season. So every night, coyotes are fussing and raising cane pretty much right down here by my chicken coop. We lost four guineas and one chicken the other day. I guess it was a coyote attack. I'm not too sure. I've seen signs and symptoms of foxes out here at night too. So the dogs will start barking. I'll throw my spotlight out and I'll see a fox. The other day I saw a fox and I saw a coyote basically right here. And the chicken coop is just right behind me. So tonight we are going to try and take care of some of the coyote problem that we're having here on the farm. I hope to get a video. It'll be our first hunting video. Uh, we've got some friends that are coming over that specialize in removing coyotes from your property. That should be pretty cool. Let's get down here to the creek. So you can see some of the trees that we've cut down here, some of the stuff that we've gotten out of the way already. Now there are some trees over here that were cut by the power company and basically there's a reroute gonna happen on the power line soon. Now I say a reroute with the power lines. In other words, there is a power pole out in the middle of our field. We've negotiated with the power company and they want to get a pole out of this swamp over here. So there's a really swampy area. So they're gonna take the line from here and run down next to the road. And that's why all these big trees and all this big brush is down here. Now I've gotta drag all this stuff to a safe place where we're gonna have a portable sawmill come up and saw this lumber. This is a great old big poplar tree. There is a significant amount of lumber on the ground here on the farm right now. It's nice and wet, so I'm not really worried about it drying out too bad or becoming a problem, but there is a lot of lumber on the ground. Now what I'm talking about here as for removal of trees, you can see like this guy right here, a lot of these trees have been blowing over due to high winds and soft ground down here by the creek. So what we wanna do is kinda of thin out the forest just a little bit. So again, like a third of the trees will be cutting off. And you can see laying out there in that field, there are a lot of trees on the ground. What we wanna do is come over here and assess how mushy the ground is. We've had three days with no rain, which is like a world record for this year. <laughs> We've had 64 inches of rain this past season, which has caused torrential flooding and mud, 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 mud. This time of year, it's hard to get your land to dry out. And I can already see by looking out here that it's just going to be too muddy for me to drag all this brush up to a big pile. And what we're going to do is utilize the firewood and utilize the timber, whatever we can cut into firewood, we'll cut into firewood, whatever we can use for logs, for saw logs, we'll use that. And whatever brush is left over, we'll pile it up and burn it. Cool. Now all this comes into play today because the grapple on the tractor is the hydraulic issue. I can't run my grapple because the rear remotes on the tractor have a malfunction. One of the valves will not accept the quick connect. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna replace that quick connect. But before we do that, we're gonna ride around on the farm a little bit and check on everything, make sure it's all cool. We got some ducks over here on the pond now. We'll check on those guys. Oh boy, here we go. Oh boy. Yeah, she's muddy. Let's see what we got going over here. Looks like the ducks <laughs> are not on the pond anywhere. Dogs love the water. Let's ride around here and see if we can find the ducks. They were out here on the pond earlier. I heard them. I sure don't see them right now. They've been kind of roaming around eating grass and seeds and stuff all down the creek line and hopefully not across the highway. We lost a couple ducks that way. I don't see them anywhere. I do see a problem, another fun problem that we can make another fun video about. Look at my standpipe right there. That's a problem. We're gonna have to get in here and clean that guy off. It makes for more good farm vlog shenanigans. <laughs> Guys, if you're new to the vlog, pound the like button, subscribe to the channel. This is what it's all about. We're on a 200 acre farm here in North Carolina and we're growing it into something wonderful. Buddy, get him, boy. Get him, boy. So we're over here on the gator, guys, and we're going to talk a little bit about tonight's hunt. So we're going to be out here in the big field. This is a 25-acre field pasture right here. We can get behind these hay bales right here, and we're going to set our 
game call out there basically about 100 yards out and we'll call in the coyotes from the creek bottom right there and that's where we're going to be and we're going to migrate to a couple other farms too we left the pond for 10 minutes and the ducks are back on the pond i don't know where the heck they were that's a good thing though if i can't find them hopefully coyotes can't find them good deal they just kind of roam around and chow down on whatever's around it's pretty cool in the summertime, there's lots of grass and stuff growing in the pond, and they'll eat small fish, minnows, grass, all kinds of fun stuff. So let's talk about our problem with the tractor. This is the quick attach for basically my grapple controls up front. We're at the rear of the tractor. I cannot get this quick attach to go into its proper seating. I'll show you how all this works real quick. We'll get you a little close up. We'll show you how this one works properly and how this one will not work. Now, in this box is supposed to be a new quick attach. So hopefully we can just pop this in, pop this out, and be good to go. Now let's show you how this quick attach system is supposed to work. This is the bottom one. Basically, you just push and pop it right out. Or to reinstall it, you just pop it right back in. The upper one will not function like that. I've tried anything and everything I could possibly do to get it to go into place, but it will not go in right there. So this is an issue that's gonna have to be solved. We gotta pull that off and put a new one on. Let's open her up good here, there we go. That's what we're gonna replace, pretty simple stuff. We should be able to just unscrew the fitting from the back here, and there is a snap ring that goes along on this little groove right here. Should be really simple should be really simple. Guys, if you're new to the channel, I'm not partial to any paint color or breed of tractor. We've got a John Deere right now and a Massey Ferguson. I like my John Deere 5065. It's a good tractor. And the thing about having a John Deere tractor is here locally, there are plenty of dealers and plenty of places for me to get parts for. Not so much on the Massey Ferguson's or the Kubota's. The Kubota is a 45 to 50 minute drive. The John Deere place is a 15 minute drive. That makes a difference in choosing your tractor. Let's get in here and get the work done. So we've got to take that fitting off and then we've got to come on this side and take this snap ring off and you can see the loop right there for the snap ring. All right, let's try and get this snap ring off. Oh yeah, there she goes. Spreading pretty good. All right, we got her moving anyway. Let's see if we can get this off. I don't have really the proper tool to remove this, but I do have a little pair of pliers that I can use. There we go. Come on, baby. You know you want it. There we go. Boop. That's our snap ring. Okay, we're gonna reach into the rear here. We've got an adjustable wrench. Loosen this guy up, hopefully. Life should be good. Might not have left that snap ring in for a little bit longer. I think that's causing our line to twist a little bit. Once again, nothing is going to be easy. This is farming so whatever ultra complicated way we can do this would be the best way to do it really second set of hands would be awesome we need some of that farm help that old one lonely farmer's got some young boys that like to work there we go we broke it loose yeah buddy it wasn't bad at all now i'm going to bleed off any pressure that might be on here should be good to go should be gravy. You don't want to take this thing apart with pressure or it'll get blasted with hydraulic fluid. Yeah. Coming across. Nice. Move that out of the way. Pull out the old guy. Here's the new one. Here's the old one. There is a snap ring on this side too. So I've got to pull that snap ring and match it into the same groove on this one right here. Pretty cool. Nice. That went on nicely. It was a snap. <laughs> All right, we'll reinsert this guy back through here. There we go. Get our new line matched up with our fitting back here, hopefully. Gonna just get it finger tight, and then I'm gonna put my snap ring back on here. All right, I have a snap ring pliers right here, but it's really not the right size. It may work, it may not work. We shall see. We're gonna get started here. Right now, somebody knows a trick to this, and they're thinking about it. 
but they're not here to show me. Oh, <laughs> you're not gonna beat me, little girl. I got you right to where I want you. You guys know what they call this in southern Russia, right? Tevshiski. <laughs> Tevshiski! Yeah, baby. Sweet love. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Get in there. I can have my glasses fogging up on me there. Almost messed up my good luck bandana. All right, let's snug this guy down. And I think we should be in business. Nice, daddy like it. Let's see. Yes, sir, good to go. Awesome, we'll fire the tractor up and make sure we get pressure and no leaks. Nice, good pressure, no leaks. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little ride around the farm. I hope you enjoyed learning how to install a quick connect hydraulic connector. Pretty simple, pretty easy. The snap rings were the biggest pain in the butt and I think if we'd have had the right tools, it would have made it a three minute job. So pretty cool, pretty fun. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the farm vlog today. Be sure and pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon. It'll notify you when I post a new video because what good would being subscribed be if you didn't know when I posted a new video? Thank you so much to Chad and Shelby over at North Country Off Grid for sending me a cool shirt. I appreciate it, guys. We'll see you all next time on the farm here in the Stony Ridge. All right? Land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of what I made on the Stony Ridge. Woo! <laughs> Tough shisky!